Welcome to video number 15 in the series we're doing on high school wrestling rules. As always, my name is Alex. I'm the one that created this channel. Different Breed Productions is my, the name of the channel. So if it's your first time here, welcome. If you're returning, glad to have you back. This video, as you saw by the thumbnail you clicked on in the link description, is on coach misconduct, conduct of team personnel, and conduct of fans. Now, all three of those together aren't really long enough for their own video, so I thought about putting these all together. They go hand in hand, so the rules, they kind of intermingle with all three different types of people, coach, coaches, team personnel, whether that's a trainer, whatever that may be, statistician, and fans of that team. So the rules, as always, I give the rules, rule five, section five, articles one, two, and three, Rule 7, Section 5, Articles 1 through 6. Rule 6, Section 6. Rule 8, Section 1, Article 5. That is where you will find the definitions and the descriptions of what defines each, the penalties for each, for coach misconduct, conduct of team personnel, conduct of fans. Down to your right is the red subscribe button. If you would, subscribe to the channel. I would greatly appreciate your support. And I've had people ask me about sharing the videos you don't have to have a YouTube account. I wish you would so you could subscribe, but you don't have to. The link above the URL link, you do is copy and paste. If you have social media, copy the link, take it to your social media, paste it in like your, where you can give your, how your day's going, whatever you want to call it. Share it. That'd be great. I would greatly, greatly appreciate that. So, like I said, coach misconduct, team misconduct, and conduct of fans. Let's do this. So let's tackle what defines coach misconduct. Now, I'm sure most of you guys have been to some type of sporting event that's not a wrestling meet. You know, basketball coaches are up and down the sideline arguing with officials. Football coaches throw their headset down, they argue back and forth. Baseball, they throw their hat down. Whatever. I don't know for certain if each sport has what they refer to as coach misconduct, but wrestling clearly states coach misconduct. Now, the head coach, that is important, not an assistant, not a parent, not another wrestler, the head coach only can have a conference with the official, not the assistant referee, if it's like a placement round or a championship match, you, you can have a referee and an assistant. The head coach, We'll have a conference with the head official on that mat at the scores table for that mat. Now, some meets may have like a head scores table where they run track wrestling, they run the bout sheets, all that kind of stuff. The mat where the match is taking place on, that score table is where the conference can take place at. Now, that occurs when a, when a coach thinks that the referee has misapplied a rule or has, say he thinks that the coach thinks that he or improperly um, applied a technical violation or some type of uh, the scoring criteria wasn't met. Now, if you guys have already seen in the other videos, you've learned about technical violations and you learned about scoring. So you should be able to, you know, teach, teach that by now. That's how good we try to explain stuff. But the coach, if he thinks he's, there's been a real misapplication, then go to the, to the table when there's no action, like if they wrestler go out of bounds, end of the period, whatever, the coach will come to the table, hey, I think you've got X, Y, and Z wrong, Mr. Official. All right, we'll pull out the rule book. We'll look and see, okay, uh, da, 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 da. no. If the coach is right, we can correct, we can correct if anything's been misapplied. That is another video coming, it's called Bad Time or Correction of Errors. Very ticky tacky. So be looking for that, but that is a whole nother video. If the coach has questioned the referee and the referee is right, he applied the rule correctly, but the coach had a conference at the table asking about the rule, that is what's called coach misconduct. Or if the referee and coach have a conference and the coach, head coach, is questioning the judgment of the referee, that is also coach misconduct. This is the symbol. It's just one fist 
out to the side. The referee will stand in front of the scores table. Uh, coach misconduct on green. Have coach misconduct on red. Now here is the penalty progression. The first coach misconduct is a warning. That's it. Just a warning. The second coach misconduct is one team point for that duel or the tournament, individually bracketed tournament that you guys learned about in video number 13. The, it's one team point. Now the second penalty is a removal from the premises for that day, not the entire event, just that day, and two team points are deducted. So you get a warning, one team point deducting for this actual second penalty part, and then you the, the second actual penalty of coach misconduct is two team points deducted and removal from the premises for the rest of the day. And that's if a coach has questioned an official about a rule that's been he thinks has been misapplied uh, or misinterpreted, the referee's correct, that is coach misconduct. If the coach is right, we can correct it. That's what's called correction of errors or bad time. Or if the referee questions the judgment of an official. Now here's something else too I want to get across. There are supposed to be two beating hearts in the corner. That's why there are two chairs in the corner. Not 17 people, not two coaches, and then 15 people gathered around behind them. Two coaches. Two team personnel, whether it's a head coach and a statistician, head coach and a trainer, two assistant coaches, whatever the case is, two beating hearts. So remember that. And something else, too, I want to get across is I realize that you go to a tournament, there's maybe six, eight, ten, twelve mats, however many mats they're running, and the head coach may be on mat number three with one wrestler and another one wrestler on his team gets called, say, the mat 11, and he can't be two places at once, obviously. The If there is a question by another coach that's not the head coach, once that coach is designated as the one who questions, then he can also be hit with coach misconduct, and that will follow him the rest of the day. Just for that reason, coaches can't be in two places at once. I mean, that's not going to happen. In Rule 5, Section 28, Article 5, there that is the section of the book about timeouts. We've already, you guys have already seen the injury blood and recovery timeout. This is not necessarily a timeout, but this is where it falls at in the book. It doesn't count against anybody's injury blood or recovery, is the definition of coach misconduct if they have to go to the table to question. That is listed as a timeout, but it doesn't go against anybody's blood injury or recovery time. If a coach does come to the table, both wrestlers will remain inside the 10-foot circle where the start lines are. If a change needs to be made, if a rule was misinterpreted or misapplied, the opposing coach will get an explanation. You know, hey, coach, we, you know, messed this up or I called this wrong. This is what it's supposed to be. We're going to correct it, whatever the case is. So we, remember that. The, the, other, the opposing coach gets an explanation, as he should, if the correction needs to be made. If no correction needs to be made, that's coach misconduct. I mean, he can figure it out. He should be a pretty smart person. Wrestlers are to remain inside the 10-foot circle until the conference is over with. And once it's over with, wrestling immediately resumes as if um, an out-of-bounds situation or ends the period, whatever it may be.